So now, let's talk for a moment about fluid statics and buoyancy. And this is in section 1.9 of your textbook. So, we're talking about statics, we're talking about forces that are exerted Uh, on bodies in a fluid. Uh, when the fluid and body are at relative rest. So there's no relative motion between them. So for there to be much of anything interesting going on in that case, we're relying on the presence of a gravity field. If there's no gravity field, the pressure will be uniform everywhere in the fluid, and nothing much interesting is going on. So you'll recall from in your previous fluid mechanics studies, hydrostatic pressure equation. Which is just GP equals minus G rho dy. Uh, and this assumes that y is up and g is down. An important application of this equation is the calculation of buoyancy forces. So buoyancy, which you may have studied briefly, is a force on a body that is immersed in a fluid. In the presence of a gravity field. And essentially, it's due to the difference in density between the object and the fluid that it's displaced. So we can draw this like this. On the top surface of our body, there's a pressure P1. On the bottom surface, the pressure P2. And the top is at height H1, and the bottom is at height height h2. Gravity acts downwards and the y direction is upwards. The width of our body is L. And so the hydrostatic pressure equation, if we integrate it, tells us that the difference in pressure between the top and bottom of the object is just the integral of rho g dy between these two y locations, h1 and h2. So this is h2 to h1 rho g dy. And so there's a net force that acts on this object. The force is the pressure times uh, the area here. This will be a force per unit depth. L h2 to h1 rho g dy. So what does this term represent? This represents nothing more than the weight of the fluid that would be in the same volume as the body.
if that body wasn't there. So, what we get is that the buoyancy force is the weight of fluid displaced by the body. Now this is mainly important in liquids as well as lighter than air vehicles. So things like airships. And most aerodynamic problems, these can be neglected. But we can see how, for example, to determine whether a ship will float, it's required that its buoyancy force is larger than its weight. 